A metal sheet is hard and lustrous in nature, whereas a cake is soft and fluffy along with being sweet. Yogurt is smooth, clothes can be torn easily, flowers are bright and beautiful, a diamond is radiant, and what about oil? Oil is slippery in nature. You must be wondering what am I talking about? Why have I mentioned so many different examples? What exactly are we studying? If you listened carefully, you would have noticed I have specified at least one unique quality in each example. These qualities are scientifically addressed as the properties of these materials. So properties of matter around us are the specific qualities which define that particular matter. So let's say we take a diamond. It's brilliantly radiant. That is its property. But wait, do diamonds have only one property? No, it has more. It has so many properties ranging from its hard nature to density to the way it reacts with certain chemicals. The list goes on. That means one substance can have several properties. How do we study all the properties together? Not to worry. We divide properties of any matter known to us in two broad categories. One category pertains to physical properties, while the second category is that of chemical properties. Now let's understand each category in detail. Let's talk about physical properties first. What do we mean by physical? It literally means the body of the object. So properties that can be seen or felt by us are the physical properties. So if we take the same examples as that seen in the beginning, we have this metal sheet, a cake, yogurt, clothes, flowers, diamond and oil. If we were to list all the physical properties of all these examples, it would take us too much time. So maybe you can think of enlisting only one physical property each. The hard nature of the metal sheet and the softness of the cake come first in the list. The smoothness of the yogurt followed by the softness of clothes are next. The bright colour of the flowers and the radiant dazzle of the diamond are their respective physical properties. And not to forget the slippery nature of the oil. It's also a physical property. Can these properties change? Of course they can. For example, we can hammer the metal sheet and change its shape. Such changes which change the physical property or simply the appearance of the object are called as physical changes. So change in colour, change in shape or size, change in the state of matter are all examples of physical changes. Now tell me one thing, can physical changes be reversed? Let's find out. We have beaten this metal sheet into a larger one. Is it possible to regain the original shape and size of the sheet? Why not? We know that metals melt easily when heated to high temperatures. So we can even melt this metal and cast it into its original form. Melting of the substances is also a physical change. Because we are changing the state of matter in this case. The solid metal turns to liquid and once it comes to the normal room temperature, it solidifies again. Which means physical changes are reversible. Their effect can be reversed. Another most common example of physical changes is that of crystallization. What is crystallization you might ask? Crystallization is the process of formation of crystals. Crystals are solid forms having a specific arrangement of atoms and molecules. The best example to study crystallization is that of obtaining copper sulphate crystals from a solution. All we have to do is add copper sulphate powder to the boiling mixture of water and dilute sulfuric acid. After some time, we will find brilliant blue crystals of copper sulphate. These were a few examples of physical changes. Now let's get to know the chemical properties and changes. We will see this interesting concept in the next video.